church, you know, on fire for the Lord. And I'll never forget it. I walked in that church and the power of God was in that church, you know. And people were being slain in the spirit like we've seen just now, which is biblical. Amen. And I'll never forget it. I had pride in me, y'all. I sat back there in that pew and I said, I ain't going down there and I ain't falling down unless it's you, God. And so that old pride all of a sudden surrendered a little bit and I went down there and the preacher started praying for me and all of a sudden, bam, I hit the floor and I laid there and I said, well, God, this is you. And I said, well, I'm going to get up and guess what? <clears throat> Couldn't get up. He held me there. He, he, he took a prideful non-believer and made a true believer out of me on that floor. You see, that pride goes away and that humbleness comes down there. Amen? So God moves in a mighty way, doesn't he? So uh, if you've never done that and you're a skeptic on it, just ask God uh, what he wants. Amen? And obey him. You'll be glad. You'll be glad. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, thank uh, Thank uh, the Lord for uh, sensitive brothers and sisters moving in the spirit when God moves. Amen. Good to be back. Excited about what the Lord has for us this morning. He's already done a major work this morning. And you know, I was just listening to the uh, folks, uh, Sister Paul and some of them, been in the prisons. I'll tell you right now, one of our number one goals is to win souls. That's the greatest miracle that God does. So, you know, we get to receive some of the benefits here that we did this morning here at this altar. God touched. Paula sang that song, Lay Your Burdens Down. I'm here to tell you they were laid down and God touched them. You hold on to what God gave you this morning and don't let the devil steal it. It's yours. You hold on to it. Take it home with you. Amen. Because God gave it to you. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you that's some of the great benefits of being a believer. But the greatest benefit of being a believer is a salvation when somebody gets saved. I'm here to tell you, angels rejoice in heaven. Amen. So we got a lot to look forward to as Christians and as our, a believer. God's got so many great things for us. You can't imagine. You know, I was studying in God's Word last night, and, and I'm just overwhelmed by some of the stuff that God has for us and what He's going to do for us. And we, being uh, His children... Is, is is what he has for us, amen? And, and today, the Lord wants me to add a little more to it, our hope this morning and our uh, outlook uh, for what he does have for us. Uh, this morning, uh, uh, the Lord wants me to minister on, uh, if I can find it in my little book right here, I know it's in here, uh, Holy City, New Jerusalem. Did you know there's going to be a New Jerusalem that comes? Hallelujah. And uh, the old one is going to be uh, 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 renewed what's going to happen. And so I'm excited as I got to studying and looking at some of uh, what God has for us uh, as a Christian, what we have to look forward to. But I'm here to tell you this morning, we still got a long way to go, folks. But praise God, God is in control. And I think uh, truly we're on the backside uh, of the church age is what we're in right now. I truly believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is fixing to come in this generation. I believe we will see the coming of the Lord. I'm here to tell you right now, we see things going on in the world. Uh, we see it's like uh, the whole world around us is on fire, isn't it? It's just all over us. You turn on the TV in the last six or seven years, neighbors hate each other. They're killing each other. They're burning homes down. They're killing people all over the world. And uh, it's starting to come to America. All this stuff is happening just like the Bible stated that it would do. Uh, wars and rumors of wars. We're seeing it everywhere. It's this confirmation of prophecy uh, that God has told us in his word that's going to happen. You know, I was uh, praying a little bit this morning, and I'm here to tell you right now, uh, our Lord Jesus is coming back. He's done come one time. He is going to come again, praise God. But you know, as much as the world wants peace, Jerusalem wants peace, uh, peace uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu wants peace, uh, uh, everybody wants peace, uh, well, not everybody. Uh, the devil's army's marching out there, and they want war, and they want to destroy us because they know the time is short and uh, it's fixing to happen. But I'm here to tell you, peace will not arrive until our king comes. 
But and when our king comes, I want to tell you, they're going to be another thousand years uh, of rebellion that's still going on in this earth with our king here upon this earth, establishing and setting up his kingdom on this earth. And the curse will not go away until the end of that thousand years because there will still be death. Uh, people that uh, are, are living during that millennium reign time, uh, there'll be sinners also. There'll be Christians and believers also during that millennium time. And those people who go against the laws of the land of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, who will begin ruling and getting rid of all rebellion, uh, rebellion in this earth, uh, uh, if they go against uh, some of the laws and stuff, they will be put to death. That's what the Bible says. We can see it in God's Word. But I'm here to tell you this morning, praise God, with all of this stuff that's going on, uh, there's going to be a new Jerusalem. It's going to be brand new. It's going to be a renewed. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to talk about some of it this morning. It's exciting to look and see what God has for us futuristically. We're going to be with the king for eternity. He is going to rule and reign for eternity. Nobody will knock him off of his kingdom. Amen. That's exciting. And you know, when you get to looking at uh, some of the things that, uh, that uh, New Jerusalem is made out of, uh, it's going to be 1,500 square, y'all. That's 1,500 miles high, 1,500 miles long, square. Man, it's going to be an awesome place. And by the way, there won't be no daylight, I mean no darkness there because the kings that rule it uh, will be the light. Hallelujah, praise God. Amen. So that's exciting for us to look at what we got uh, as a Christian believer coming to us. Now you know it's God's uh, 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 desire that every man and every woman be saved. He created us. He created us not as a, uh, a robot. We, have a de we can make a decision where we want to be or not to be. And I hate to say it, there's many people outside this church and around that have chosen the way of the world. And the devil is going rampant out there. Things is happening uh, uh, that you can't imagine. I never imagined some of the things that I'm seeing today happen, happen. Amen? It's just an awesome thing uh, what we're seeing out there. Uh, going on right around us. I never dreamed it in my lifetime that I'd see some of these things, you know. When I was a young man, you come into church, even if you wasn't a Christian, you reverenced God and you took off your hat and you done some things. And now we got people out there that curse God, blaspheme God, murder and, and violate uh, God's creation by the way we're made in his image. And so you see more and more of this going on uh, around us. It's like, turn on the news. I'd like to know what the national news, uh, uh, what's going on around the world. And half of them don't tell you the truth. You got to get a, a, a hold of something, a news a media that will show you more of the truth of what's going on around in the world. But I like to let people know what's happening in the biblical aspect of it too. God is in control. Amen. He is in control. Let's look uh, this morning in Revelation 21, 1 and 3 and uh, just see a little bit about uh, what the Lord has for us this morning and see if I can get uh, in some of the scriptures uh, the Lord has this morning, you know. We're going to talk about that holy city. We're going to talk about maybe it's, uh, it's some of its name and, and uh, uh, some of the restrictions, who's going to be the ruler of it. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Well, you know, I, I look at God. He's such an awesome God, isn't he? You know, it's like the first earth and the, and I mean the, uh, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. You know, God's an awesome God, isn't he? You know, he can purify things, can't he? I truly believe, you know, he's going to purify the new heavens and new earth by fire, by the way. And it's going to be pure. And when we go into that city at the end of the millennium reign with our king and no rebellion, all of it's going to be stricken down. There's still going to be some people that rise up against God at the end of the thousand-year millennium reign. You notice on TVs, uh, some of them now, they call in the younger generation the millennium generation. You seen that? Uh-huh. I, I don't know where that age group starts. I don't think I'm involved in that. I think I'm the... <laughs> but we're seeing some of that. I tell you right now, God is in control, and uh, he's got some great things for us. We're going to, be, we're going to dwell in New Jerusalem with him. And we're going to preach all over the world, uh, us servants and saints of the Most High. We're going to go all over the world during that millennium reign, and we're going to help our Lord uh, 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 conform the nations of the world to become a believer. And if they don't, they'll gang up with uh, 
uh, Satan at the end of that thousand years where he'll be loose. And by the way, uh, he'll be put in chains for that thousand years. And so the people say, the devil made me do it. Uh-uh, he's going to be in hell. So what's going to happen there at the end of that thousand years, uh, uh, he'll be loosed and the rebellious people that don't like obeying the Lord thy God and uh, being under his rule will gang up with him and then God will destroy every one of them and it'd be a done deal. Now, that's what's going to happen. That's putting it in a nutshell. But we're going to look at some things that's going to happen uh, uh, where we at today. A new heaven, a new earth, and for the heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, verse 2 there. And I, John, uh, uh, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Now, this thing, John the Revelator, seen the holy city, the new one. Think about that. Thousands of years ago, he seen it. And said right here, coming down, uh, uh, from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, Jesus. Let's go a little bit further right there, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, I'm here to tell you uh, this morning, I want to tell you that our Lord we're going to get to see him. We're going to be with him for eternity. He's going to be there. He's going to dwell in this temple. We're going to get to just be in his presence. Is that going to be awesome or what? Now, I'm here to tell you this morning, we was in his presence right here. We're in his presence right now. And what do we do? How do we do that? We take it by faith. I know him, don't you? I sense his spirit. I know when he's around and uh, when he's right on me or whatever. Uh, my whole uh, contendence, my world changes uh, when I'm in his presence. Amen. So he's here, but I'm here to tell you when we get in New Jerusalem and be with him for eternity, praise God, you're going to see him face to face, you're going to be with him, you're going to praise him, you're going to do the work that he's asked us to do, praise God, and when we get with him in New Jerusalem, guess what? There will be no curse no more. The curse will be gone. Death, hell, and the grave, it's all going to be gone. The curses of the land is going to be gone. We're going to have a new uh, Jerusalem, a new heaven, a new earth, it's all going to happen, and we're going to help our Lord rule and reign for eternity uh, the universe, by the way. And it's amazing, isn't it, that God has chosen uh, the earth to, for his dwelling place. He's got the whole universe, by the way. And by the way, he's in the third heaven up there right now in heaven. There is a heaven, materialistic heaven up there. We can read about it and see so much about it in God's word. Uh, it's there. But he's decided, hey, I'm going to uh, put a new Jerusalem down upon the earth, and that's where I'm going to drill with my people, my creation, the ones uh, uh, that uh, I created. I'm going to dwell with them for eternity. Does he love us or what? Now, I'm here to tell you. But, you know, a, a lot of people choose the wrong way. Praise God, we was talking about it a while ago. Uh, salvation is one of the greatest things, uh, miracles of mankind. Man cannot save a soul or forgive sin. Only God can do that. Amen. Only God can change a life. Look at your lives. How it has radically changed since you said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ and denied the flesh. That's hard, isn't it? Some of the things. You deny the flesh and quit sinning and doing those things and uh, you live a daily life with the Lord. Why? Because your expectations. Uh, you're going to be in that new Jerusalem we're talking about here this morning. We're going to rule and reign with him for eternity, praise God. And the peace that passes all understanding is going to be with us for eternity. Amen? That's exciting. I'm here to tell you, I've been, uh, I've been going through a few things the last week or so, you know, and I look and I say, man, this earth ain't got nothing I want. I'd rather be in heaven. I tell you right now, it seems like stuff all around you. And when I was a younger man, boy, you thought that, hey, I'm wanting to live on and enjoy life and move on. But the closer you get to God, the, the more you realize the world ain't got nothing for you. It's all about him. That's where our, our desires and hopes is, is to be with him. Amen? Because all of this curse is upon this earth. We're having to dwell in it. It's all around us, isn't it? But I'm here to tell you right now, we got him in our heart, praise God, and we can overcome and sustain the things that we have to go through. And I'm going to tell you, there have been times last week I wanted to go to Miami. <laughs> they just times the old flesh gets it, you know. But I tell you right now, you just keep standing. You keep pressing on. You keep getting in God's Word and reading God's Word and studying God's Word, amen. And it starts filling your spirit man up and look out, you're going to come busting out of that stable, Amen ready to go again and meet uh, uh, whatever uh, comes at you because you know that you have the Lord thy God uh, is with you. And those burdens we talked about, she sang about a while ago, he'll carry those burdens, amen? And they some that we have to carry sometimes. 
but God said he'd be with us. You know, I love that scripture. He never, 13, 5 of Hebrews, he'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. He's going to be with you always, praise God. As long as you do your part, he's certainly done, done. He is and going to do his, amen. So done deal. Listen, you know, uh, what's going to happen is the Jerusalem, the old Jerusalem up there is going to move from the planet heaven to the planet earth. And uh, it's going to be it's going it's going to be the results of a renovation of the heavens and the earth by fire. That's what's going to happen there. That's after the church age and the millennium age. Uh, at that end, right there, it's like it's going to be purified. You know, it's like getting gold and silver. They put it in a fire, and it it gets all the impurities out of that gold, and uh, and uh, the fire just burns it all out. And what's left is pure gold. Well, that's what's going to happen. God's going to have our pure, uh, holy city, Jerusalem, and the pure heavens and the universe is being purified the way I look at it uh, for his uh, dwelling with him and his servants. That's us. Amen. Praise God, the believers. Now, there are going to be some normal people uh, during that time is going to live too. But let's go a little bit further right here and just look uh, and see what God's word says. And it said, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, I'll tell you right now, when that happens, guess what? There's going to be uh, 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 some conditions on earth. Uh, man's going to get a lot of blessings out of that too. We're going to look at some of that uh, 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 this morning. You know, God's going to be dwelling among us. That's going to be exciting to know that our God is right there with us. Amen? Praise God. Now let's look at, uh, I want to look at, uh, well, I won't go there, but Isaiah 65, 17, which is thousands of years ago, the prophet Isaiah, he prophesied about a new heaven and a new earth being renewed. He did that thousands of years ago. You know, God tells us what's going to go on, doesn't he? In his holy word, he tells us the expectation, what to look forward to, how to look for it. It's coming. Amen? We can get and dig and dig and dig, and you'll see all of this. It's exciting, y'all. Oh, yeah, by the way, I got to studying last night some. I got a little deeper than uh, I got in some stuff, you know. And when we get with the Lord, I, I want to tell you right now, uh, in New Jerusalem, uh, uh, in the new heavens and the new earth that God uh, our Father is sanctifying for us, amen, I'm here to tell you uh, we're going to have our homes, we're going to have our vineyards, we're going to have our things that we need, but it's no, not going to be curse on labor. And by the way, there ain't going to be no mortgages, no mortgages. All that's going to be a thing of past. We're going to own our home and dwell there with the Lord. You know, I like that scripture in, uh, in the book of John. Uh, uh, it talks about, uh, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go prepare a place for you, where I'm at, you will be also. Think about that. And it says right here in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. So these mansions there, you know, and I, I, it's just going to be exciting, y'all, to look at what God has for us. Let me tell you, New Jerusalem is going to have streets of gold. It states that in the word of God. Amen. And these 12 foundations are of rubies and emeralds and, and, and diamonds uh, uh, that are layer up the foundation of New Jerusalem. And that represents the 12 disciples. They're going to be 12 pearls uh, and and 12, those pearls will represent gates going into New Jerusalem. And it's going, they're going to be 12 gates of pearls. Now, you look at that and say, well, today's pearl's only so big. Well, God's God. He can make a bigger pearl as he wants to. Amen? <laughs> Think about that. They're going to be 12 gates, and they're going to be, they call them a, a, a pearl there. And they represent the 12 disciples going in and out of God's uh, uh, holy uh, 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 1,500 square new Jerusalem. Amen. Praise God. And there's going to be rivers coming out of there. And there's going to be trees for 1,500 miles that will heal the nations. And by the way, the nations uh, will have to come to God uh, uh, during uh, the millennium reign. And they'll have to come to God and cry out to God and worship God and, and uh, 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 submit to our Lord. If they don't, guess what? They won't get rain. And you try to go out there and grow crops uh, in the world without rain. You know, they're already stating that there's going to be a great drought coming up on the world here, uh, coming down the road. But I don't believe we'll be here. I believe we'll be gone before that happens. Uh, I believe God's go uh, getting ready to take us out of here, y'all. And I'm ready and excited to be with the Lord because the new program, the church stage, will end at that time. 
And uh, that's when uh, we get raptured and Christ comes back in seven years and we'll be with him. Uh, the millennium will start uh, at that moment and the battle of Armageddon and some of those things. And then at the end of that, we see uh, the renovation of the heavens and the earth with the new Jerusalem we're going to look at. We're still looking at here this morning. But I'm here to tell you it's exciting uh, to think about what God has for his children. Amen. And in Isaiah 65, 17, it talked about a new heaven, a new earth. There it is right there. For behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Now, why do you think uh, that's going to happen? i tell you why I think, uh, as I read and study, it's going to be such a glorious uh, uh, new Jerusalem and heavens and earth that we won't remember the old stuff because God's glory is going to shine through all that he has created for us uh, like never before. I truly believe that. And uh, we'll not remember some of those things uh, 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 of, of the old stuff uh, uh, we're looking at here. It says right here, the former shall not be remembered nor uh, come into mind. Let's go a little bit further right here and look in uh, uh, Revelations 3.12. You know, we got to be overcomers, though. We as Christians uh, have got to stand our ground. We got to keep pressing on. We got to keep praying. We got to stand before the throne. We got to stay in God's word because uh, if you don't, uh, uh, you're going to fall by the wayside. You got to become, continue to be an overcomer. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall uh, go no more out and I will write upon him uh, the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is what? There's that new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. I'm here to tell you we're children of God, and people's going to know that we're children of God. And we're going to be in that new Jerusalem with him, hallelujah. We're going to rule and reign with him there. And, you know, uh, uh, it ain't the rule and reign uh, that I'm looking at because uh, 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 that's, a, that's a job, but God will give us all the abilities to do those things. What I'm looking at is being with our Lord. That's going to be the greatest thing is being right with our Lord and praising him and seeing him and worshiping him in a, probably in a daily manner like never before. Multitudes of people praising Almighty God. Can you imagine? And do you know he's a God who knows each ever individual? Hallelujah. You're not just somebody. You're not just a servant to him. You're his friend. And he tells his friends what's going on. That's what he's doing now. He's telling us what's going to happen and how it's going to happen and how you're going to know unless you get in there and study. I tell you right now, the Bible states that we must endure to the end. We must be overcomers. And we got to stand with our king. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you right now, it's getting harder and harder, ain't it? People are coming at Christians left and right. You go down to the uh, storehouse here, you know, and uh, they're already starting. You see things going on. We see something happen up in North Carolina here uh, about uh, uh, people that uh, are against Christians. They got killed. And then you see people uh, that are Christians, they being killed. It's a religious thing, isn't it? It's not, hey, I want your money, I want you to go. It's a, a demonized uh, uh, thing that's happening because uh, the demons of hell and Satan knows that the time is short. I truly believe, uh, as I read and study, and we've heard it, that uh, the enemy has loosed more demons. But don't be afraid of that. Keep your mind focused on the king because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We have the power over those demons, but we got to stand our ground. When we pray, we got to stand solid. I bind the enemy from coming and doing this. I bind Satan from doing this, uh, coming at my finances, coming at my health, coming at my family. I bind. You got to do it with authority. Amen. And uh, I tell you right now, when you're going through it, it's like, I'm doing it, Lord. What's happening? Uh huh. What happened to McDonald's here, Lord? <laughs> Quick. But I'm here to tell you, you just stand and you'll see the glory of God as it progresses on. You know, Dan, you got to look at it. He prayed and it was 21 days before he got his answer, but the Lord heard him right off the bat. But he had to send uh, 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 Gabriel and some of them down. Michael had to go down there and help Gabriel fight through the principalities in high places here to get the answer down to him. Took him 21 days. They literally had to fight the enemy to get that down. Can you imagine? And can you imagine the power and authority that we have when we pray? I was telling my wife, I'm just going to be honest with you, yesterday we was in the doctor's thing, you know, we was talking about the Lord and talking about Joyce Myers. She was reading a book or something on Joyce Myers. And I, uh, I was 
telling her, I said, I got a problem. I said, I got a problem. What is it? Well, it's just me between me and the Lord. And finally, I told her, I said, I'll tell you what it is. I need to pray more, and I know that. I need to pray more. I'm not praying enough. I'm just telling you. I pray, but I don't pray enough. Because when you pray, something happens. If you don't pray, things ain't going to happen. So that's one of the hardest things of being a Christian. you got to take time to pray. You've got to do it, amen? And you got to uh, get yourself uh, in a mode. That, uh, you know, I try to do it every day, but it's still not enough, y'all. It's not enough. And I look at our forefathers and our generals in God's word, how they did it. Look at Paul. Look what he did and Peter and all of them. Uh, they prayed and prayed and prayed. We got to pray. We got to talk to the Lord about situations that's going on around us in our life and turn down these strongholds. The enemy's building up. Just like Daniel had to pray, he got his answer, though. It did come because God hears a righteous man's prayer. Amen. A righteous woman's prayer. Amen. Just a little extra there. <laughs> Excuse me. Praise God. We got to be overcomers, y'all. Let's look for, uh, you know, the... Oh, Abraham and them in, in Hebrews 11, 10, some of those, they look for a, a city whose builder is God. Amen. See, they was already looking for that new Jerusalem. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, our forefathers that was there. Look here. For he looked for a city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is who? God. He wasn't looking for the cities that God wanted him uh, uh, to be involved in and build here and everything. He's looking for that eternal city, praise God. He's looking for that new Jerusalem. That's our brother Abraham, thousands of years. He was looking. So what is that expectations for us uh, as Christians this morning? We need to be looking for that new Jerusalem. It's coming, amen, praise God. And be excited about what God has for us and comfort one another with these words about what God has for us and what's coming for us. Amen. And I tell you right now, when we look around us, we have things going on in our life, grief, sorrow, pain, it's everywhere uh, in this world that we live in. Why? Because of the curse, because of, uh, of Satan and Adam and Eve and the curse that's upon this land, it's all around us. Mankind has been cursed. Even the world is cursed. But praise God, he gave us a way out when he prophesied that his son would come. His son came, hallelujah, praise God, and he ascended up into heaven, sits at the right hand interceding for you and I, and the Bible says he will come again. That second advent means he will come again, praise God. But before the second advent takes place, they will be a rapture. He will come down in the clouds. He will call us home, and we'll be out of here uh, for seven years with the Lord. And then the second advent is when he puts his foot back down here upon this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Look here. Look for a city whose builders uh, and maker is God. Let's look at 13, uh, uh, verse 13. Verse 13, and these all, these all died in faith, not having received the promise. What happened there? Jesus hadn't come yet. They died in the faith. How did uh, Christians uh, 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 become uh, Christians in the Old Testament? By faith. By faith. Because Christ hadn't come yet. By faith that he's coming. Look at here. They had not received the promise, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded. They were totally persuaded of what God said is going to happen. Amen. Uh, of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Do you feel like that? I tell you right now, the more God you get in you, the more you're going to realize, hey, I'm just an old pilgrim passing through. You know, this is this is just temporary down here. I'm, I'm out of here one day, you know. I got something better coming. Hallelujah, praise God. Let's look at uh, verse 14 there. And for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Ah, they seek in that new Jerusalem. They seek in the, the renovated new heavens and earth that God is going to prepare for us. He's going to declare it. It's going to happen. Amen. Let's go in verse 15 look around, and look right here. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Let's look at 16. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. That city is New Jerusalem. Hallelujah, praise God. He is preparing it for you and I. It's already there, but it's going to be renovated. It's going to be renewed. Think about it. 
it's exciting about what the Lord's going to do here. Let's look right here. Uh, it's going to be a city of the living God in Hebrews 12, 22. City of the living God. Look right here. Nothing like the word. The word's truth. Amen. It tells us. Hallelujah. Look here. But now, but ye uh, are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Now, right here, you notice that, uh, but you have come unto the Mount Zion. Uh, that is the heavenly Jerusalem, praise God. It's spelled with a Z is the one down here, Z-I-O-N. Now look right here. Unto the city of the living God and the heavenly, heavenly Jerusalem, an uh, innumerable company of angels. Man, we're gonna, can you imagine getting in a number a uh, company of angels and praising God and worshiping God uh, in heaven with him? Hallelujah. It's going to be awesome. Look here. Talking about the city of the living God. Hallelujah. Let's look at Revelations 22, 3 and 5. Uh, I want to read that, 22, uh, 3 through 5. It talks about uh, uh, yeah, God is going to be the rulers. Yes, 22, 3 through 5. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the, the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Now, who is the ruler of, the, of that? It's God and the Lamb. Amen. Praise God. Look here. And they shall see his face, and his, he shall be in their forehead, and, uh, in his forehead. And there shall be no more night there. And there need no candles, neither the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I'm here to tell you, ever and ever is a long time, y'all. We can't even imagine what ever and ever is. You can't imagine? I, I, that's the way I put it, but... Uh, Y'all have heard me talk about the dove bringing the one grain, uh, taking a one grain away from the earth. How long would it take them doves to get rid of the earth? Eternity just begins. <laughs> Think about it. It's an awesome thing that God has for us. Look at here. Let's look at Revelations 21, 4 through 8, and I want to talk about the, uh, the new Jerusalem. It's going to be blessings for men on the new earth. What is some of the blessings going to be? And look, look, I just love this. This is one of my favorite verses right here. It said, and God shall wipe away all tears. You ever had any tears? Uh-huh. We all humans, we cry. There's times we have to cry and weep. But look here, the tears are going to be gone from our eyes. And there should be no more death. Oh, that's going to be a good one, isn't it? There's, no, there's not going to be death anymore. It's going to be gone, praise God. There shall neither be sorrow. i tell you right now, when we get into sorrow, it hurts, doesn't it, sometimes? It's going to be gone. No more crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. I'm here to tell you right now, there's some folks, uh, uh, our brother Vernon's probably in pain. I'm praying that his pain is gone, that God's touched him this morning. But I'm here to tell you, pain is a terrible thing. I was at uh, uh, the store day before yesterday, and this uh, old gentleman was uh, behind me. And he bent over, and he got to hurting so bad, he, I thought he was going to cry. And I told him, I said, you get in front of me. And uh, we got to talking, and he said his back is hurting him so bad, he can't stand it. And we were standing in a line. There was a bunch of people there. And we were standing in line. I said, man, my back. He said, he's an old guy. And he said, I'm hurting so bad I can't understand. And I said, are you a Christian? I like to know because if they say, no, I'm not a Christian, I'm not, I like to get permission to pray. Amen. So he looked at me and said, yes, I'm a Christian. I said, do you mind if I pray for your back right now? He said, no, please do. That line was standing there. I laid my hand on that man's back and I cried out to God. I said, God, take the pain from this man. This man's hurting. God, please take the pain away from this man right now in the name of Jesus because you are God who can do it. And people standing there looking. But I prayed and I felt the power of God tell me to pray for him. And I prayed for him. And that man left and he come back in and said, I want to thank you for praying for me. I said, I'm praying for your ministry. That's what he said. Is that God or what? I tell you right now, I look for the day, don't you, that pain's going to be gone. And it's going to be when we get in New Jerusalem with our King and our Lord, there'll be no pain, there'll be no sorrow, uh, there'll be no crying, there'll be no tears. It'll all be gone, hallelujah, praise God. The curse will be gone. Give God the glory because his son paid all the price for you and I. Amen? That's where uh, it happened on Calvary and that innocent blood that was shed for you and I. God gave us a way out. Amen. And verse 5, it says, uh, They that sat upon their throne said, Behold, I make all things new. See, he's going to make all the things that's here new. He's going to uh, renew them. And he said in, to me, Right, for well, these words are true and faithful. I'm here to tell you, 
My sister asked some people in here this morning, do you really want to know the truth? You know, my question to people on the Internet this morning, uh, if you're serving a, 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 a God and you don't know he's the true living God, would you want to know the truth? If you really want to know the truth, ask God and he'll show you the truth. Amen. Just like some folks uh, raised their hand in here this morning, they want to know the truth. The truth will set you free. Praise God. There's victory in the truth of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we got to believe uh, that he is. He said unto me in verse 6, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha Omega, beginning and end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. So I'm talking to you on the internet too. If you are thirst and you want this water we're talking about, God said he'd give it to you freely. If you'll just cry out for it and mean it, uh, God will give it to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it said in verse 7, he that overcome it shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. I tell you right now, we got something great to look forward to this morning, y'all. We're going to inherit all of this we've been talking about. It's ours already, yours. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go a little bit further right here. I want to talk about uh, some conditions. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit of wrath uh, on people who do not believe what we're talking about this morning. I want to read in the book. Uh, 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 well, before I do, I, I want to say this. Uh, I want to say uh, some of the benefits and blessings on this new earth we're talking about, God's dwelling among us is going to be there. I want to tell you another too. The ungodly neighbors, uh, you ain't going to have any. They're all around us. I'm not talking about the ones right next to you. Look at them. Our nations and the world, we got ungodly neighbors that want to kill us because we're Christians. Well, you ain't going to have that problem in the new Jerusalem and new heavens and the new earth, praise God. You won't have neighbors that will be rebellious and evil and being led by the devil. I tell you right now, these people that's in these other uh, religions, not Christianity, but religions, they're in bondage and they're being led by the devil. I want to tell you, I read this book. Betty gave this book to Becky. Becky read it and I got a hold of it and I read it. I liked it. But it's talking about, I'm just going to give you an example. What kind of world are we living in? A few years back, Reinhardt Bunky, I've seen that man preach to 500,000 people. And I read books that Reinhardt Bunky, he laid hands on me and prayed for me one time in North Carolina. But I, I read some of his books and he said that the witches uh, in some of his services uh, in some of these African countries that he was preaching at, they got big barrels down there. And the witches uh, and the warlocks and all of them come down there and they throwed all their trinkets and evil junk in them barrels and they burned them and they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and they got set free from the bondage of the demons of the worlds that's out here. And so I was in that, uh, 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 I was in the Reinhardt Bunky uh, 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 Crusade is having up in Greensboro, North Carolina. 800 people there. This man is used to speaking to 500,000. He was in America. And I went to the back back there and I got to talking to this uh, black man and I said, uh, you from around here? He said, no, nope, I'm with the Reinhardt Bunky Ministries. I knew right off the bat he was with them. And me and him got to talking about the Lord and how God's moving and everything. And he got to telling us, he said, brother, he said, in Africa, they're burning, witchcraft is burning all their prayer from there and everything. But I come to America and I see on my TV, it says, call you a psychic. So I got to reading this book that, uh, uh, that Betty had given Becky. And I read it. It's a good book, by the way. We're going to give it to somebody else, I think, uh, but anyway, I got to read, if just at the moment, God wanted me to get more depth in that because downtown in Lyman, these wacko psychics was putting up signs. See, they're getting on the media now. Call my number. I'll give you a seance. I'll read your palm. And I'm a good witch, by the way, says the devil. And the first thing they'll try to do is disarm you. I'm of God. This is of God, a gift he gave me. That's a lie from hell. And uh, so I got to looking at that, and I said, man, I hate that. I'm going to go in and destroy that sign and tear it down. I wanted to, you know, but they said, you can't do that. That's private property and all that, you know. And I pray, God, I rebuke them in Jesus' name. But what it is, uh, uh, familiar spirits get on people. And when familiar spirits get on people, 
uh, the familiar spirits wants them to go to these psychics. And when they go to a psychic, what is a psychic? A psychic is demon-possessed. They got demons in them. And that, uh, that uh, 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 the one that's uh, been around these people, familiar spirits, knows all their history. They, knows their, they know their weak spots. They know what turns them on and off and what happens in their life. So that familiar spirit goes with that person to that psychic, and that familiar spirit uh, communicates uh, with that uh, demon-possessed psychic. Uh-huh. I'm telling you some stuff here a lot of people don't know. But it's out there. It's everywhere. And by the way, these demon uh, 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 spirits that run around uh, after familiar spirits after people, they've been doing it uh, since time, since God created man. So they're pretty experienced in what they're doing. So, you know, some of them start to believe in reincarnation and all this stuff. And, oh, by the way, some of the familiar spirits, oh, yeah, I knew that person 2,000 years ago. I know all that. So I'll give it to this psychic, and they'll tell about it, and they'll think it, they've been reincarnated. You see how the deceiving the devil is? And if you don't get into God's Word and know who you are as a child of the king, you're going to have some problems. The Bible says we got to be overcomers. Amen? We have got to be. I don't know why the Lord wants me to talk about that but a little bit, but that's some of the things that's going on right around us now, y'all. This is the evils of the world is everywhere and captivating our children. Dungeons and dragons, all this stuff is going on around us. This uh, uh, junk, uh, Harry Potter, that's evil, that's witchcraft, it's of the devil. All of that stuff uh, that has been uh, okayed by the media is of the devil to lead our children into a satanic mode. And we as adults need to stand up for what's going on all around us because we're going to be in a new holy city and we want our children to be there. But the generation that's being raised up now is further away from God than the generation we, is here now. Because of the media in the world, they want the God out of the Bible. I mean, they, want, they don't want no Bibles, by the way. They want God out of the schools. Uh, they want, uh, it's okay to murder babies. Uh, it's okay to have homosexual marriages. Uh, and boy, you better not say nothing against them because it's a hate crime. They're preparing it so Christians can't voice their opinion and stand up. But we as Christians must stand up uh, and be strong in the Lord regardless of what happens uh, because our king is coming back. Hallelujah, praise God. And we're going to rule and reign him with him in new Jerusalem, uh, a new heaven and new earth uh, and all those old former things will be passed away hallelujah praise God and we'll be with the king and we will be with him for eternity so you better be aware of what's going on around you you better be prepared for some of this evil that's going on because I'm here to tell you greater is he that's in us I don't care what kind of demon shows up God is greater and bigger than ever one of them and we got to stand our ground not by yourself with Jesus. Amen? With the king because he has prepared the way. And sometimes we look in our physical eyes of what's going on around us, but it's that spiritual realm that you've got to look into and have faith in that God is in control. And he is. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I could get into a lot more about the economy, what's going on with the economy, what's happening with the economy. Everything looks good, but it ain't. But it don't matter. God's in control. He's going to take care of us. He's going to take care of us. Hallelujah. I believe that. And if something happens, hey, we're going to be with him. Amen. If them crazy wackos get a hold of nuclear across the seas over there and do something wrong, look out. We'll, that just means we'll get to be with the Lord that much sooner. So you got to be ready. You need to be ready because look at the glorious thing that we have to look forward to. The new heavens, the new earth, and God dwelling among us is going to be there, praise God. But I just wanted to touch base on the ungodly neighbors that we have all around us. They're all around us. They're all around us. We've got to pray and stay on with the, with the Lord. There'll be no more death, no pain, no sorrow, no tears, no sickness. Pain is going to be gone. That's a biggie. It's all going to be gone, praise God. Hallelujah. And I want to talk just a little bit you know, we talked about the 12 gates, the pearls, the 1,500 square. I want to tell you this morning, you on the Internet, you are invited to come here. If you thirst, God will quench that thirst. You are invited if you'd like to be a believer. 
I encourage you this morning to, to just uh, ask God to show you the truth, amen, because truth will set you free. I'm here to tell you the world's on fire all around us, y'all, but we got God. He is our king. Whatever comes to pass or ever happens, he is in control of it, praise God, and he has a plan for you and I, and it's a glorious plan that we can be excited about. I want to read uh, one of the last blessings in Revelation 22, 14. The Word of God says uh, uh, one of, uh, uh, at the end of Revelation, blessed are they that what do his commandments. So you see, we got something to do as Christians, haven't we? We got to turn from sin, our evil ways when we become a Christian and show the world there's something different about us. And you got to show the world that, hey, you are a child of the king. And I'm here to tell you right now, when we get God's word in this house right here, my prayer and desire that we'll all carry it back out in the community and tell somebody about Jesus. We need to win more souls for the Lord because the time is getting short. If you'll tell somebody about Jesus, praise God, and they'll maybe get an earning in their heart and it won't to come to the house of God and hear the word, to hear the truth because the truth will set them free from the burdens and the bondages that the devil has on them out there in the communities. Amen? So we as Christians got to do our part. We got to obey his commandments. And I tell you right now, if you're a Christian, uh, you are a preacher and an evangelist just like everybody else. One of the first uh, things you need to do as a Christian is uh, testify to somebody about how God changed your life. Maybe you can get somebody else's life changed. You know, one of our main focus here this morning needs to be in the new year 2015. I believe God's going to do something. I don't know the red moon in September, all kind of blood moon, all kind of things fixing them, but I'm here to tell you, we need to win souls. We need to focus on our neighbors. We need to talk to people and say, oh, are you a Christian? Do you have the Lord? And if they don't want to talk about it, okay. But if you talk to somebody, somebody's hurting, uh, you liable to give them a word of encouragement. You liable to testify to them and they see in your life what God has done for you and they want what you got because it's a hurting, dying world out there. People committing suicide everywhere because of the devil. I'm telling you, we got accountability and responsibility, Christians. We got to step up to the plate. Time is short. Look at here. Blessed are they. This is the, one of the last blessings uh, uh, in the book uh, here for the people. It says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. We're talking about that new Jerusalem. We're talking about that new city. Amen. I'm excited about what God has for us. But we as Christians must go forth. We must uh, continue doing the work uh, even though it gets hard sometimes. God will give you the strength. Amen. Let's look at Revelation 11, 15. It talks about our God in the kingdoms of this world or become the kingdoms of our Lord. That's what he's talking about. And the seventh angel sounded, there was a great voice in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's what we represent here today, y'all. We represent uh, uh, his kingdom, and we need to keep going forward. Hallelujah, praise God. Because when I stand before the Lord, I want uh, the Lord to present me before God Almighty. I don't want him uh, to be ashamed, amen? I want to... Uh, uh, open arms, uh, uh, the Lord have open arms, come on in, my faithful servant, because I want to do what he has called me to do, and you too. We want to do what the Lord's called us to do. We want to obey his commandments, go forward, try to win souls. That's our, uh, you are in the Christian army this morning, I want you to know. Make that decision. I'm going to stand in my household. We're going to stand regardless of what it is and stand for the king. Hallelujah, praise God, because there's a new Jerusalem. There's a holy city coming. It's going to be renewed, the heavens and the earth, and new Jerusalem is going to come down. It's going to be moved from the planet heaven to the planet earth. Amen? And we're going to be with him for eternity there. So we got a lot to be thankful for. That new holy city, new Jerusalem is coming and we're going to dwell with our king and he's going to be there. Blessed are they that do his commandments and they have the right to tree of life and enter through the gates uh, into that city. I'm going to ask everybody, please bow your head this morning and I'm going to ask the folks on the internet, I'm going to ask you, uh, would you like to know this Lord Jesus Christ? Because he sure 
would like to come into your heart and be Lord of your life, but it's your decision, your decision, and your decision only. But if you have a thirst and a hunger in your heart for the truth, I ask right now you'll pray this prayer. God will set you free and give you the truth. I pray that you'll pray in your heart right now, Lord, I've sinned and rebelled against you. I ask that you forgive me in the name of Jesus, your son who died on Calvary and took my sins uh, with his innocent blood. I receive him as my Lord. If you'll do that, God will come into your life. The word of God says, uh, if you'll confess him, believe he died on the cross and was raised the third day, and uh, if you'll believe that to what he did, uh, he'll take your sins away because he carried them on the cross for you if you give them to him. But you got to give them to him. And if you give them to him, uh, he'll come in your heart and be Lord of your life. I pray that you'll do that. The Bible says thou shalt be saved. That's where you'll come to that position of destruction, to the position of being saved with our Lord. I pray that you'll pray that prayer uh, this morning and God will come in your heart. And uh, and, and I pray if you prayed that prayer, uh, look in the right hand of the uh, the. Uh, the page there and just drop us a little note and say, Brother Rick, I receive the Lord as my Savior. We want to rejoice with you. We pray God to touch you and bless you in the name of Jesus. Every head bowed, anybody in here this morning uh, does not know the Lord and like to be saved, please.